Keratinocytes are the most abundant cells in the epidermis, but there are other cells that... The keratinocytes, because they're the most abundant, many of their qualities are also shared by qualities or characteristics of the epidermis in general. As you can tell by their name, keratinocytes are full of the protein keratin, which is a waterproofing protein. Um, we learned from another mini lecture that the skin participates in providing an outer covering, preventing dehydration. And when you damage or burn your skin, it basically creates the inability to keep liquids inside your body. Burns of second and third degree are just essentially, I mean, they're just weeping your fluids out leading you to low blood volume dehydration. Understand that keratinocytes, that's the name that we give these cells here in the epidermis. However, keratinocytes are epithelial tissue. And this epithelial tissue contains both squamous cells and cuboidal cells. Remember that epithelial tissues kind of exist along a spectrum with one type like bleeding into the other type, not, not bleeding like blood, but one type meshing into another type. So the epidermal cells, which are created from a stem cell in the stratum basally, those are cuboidal shape, but as they rise up and die off, they become flattened into a squamous shape and it's this squamous shape that is most abundant and characterizes the epidermis. One thing that usually students get confused about is the borderline between the alive and dead cells in skin. This borderline, as you, as you can see from this picture itself, this is the borderline right here. All of these cells, oops, sorry, wrong. All of these cells up here are dead and all of these cells down here are plump and alive with a readily discernible nucleus. The borderline of live and dead cells occurs about one third of the thickness away from the dermis. And this is about the distance where keratinocytes get cut off from the blood vessels that are in the subpapillary plexus that are looping up into these dermal papillae. As the cells die, not only does their nucleus become flattened, but all of their vesicles of melanin and keratin start to ex explode. The attachments or the desmosomes holding the cells together, they start to degrade as well. I have a picture here over on the left of one of these attachments, which is called a desmosome. Your skin is a protective layer, and it's these desmosomes that hold your cells together very tightly to form an impenetrable layer. And that's impenetrable from water trying to get out or things trying to get in. Although the desmosomes are not completely degraded as your skin starts to shed off from your epidermis, some of them are still active. And that is, as I said before, what causes skin cells to shed in sheets instead of individual cells. Uh, thus accounting for the peeling of a sunburn. Desmosomes form what we officially call tight junctions, and these types of junctions and desmosomes are spoken about in more detail in the tissues chapter of your book, which is the chapter that we are covering piece by piece in the lab. There are many other types of cells that exist in the epidermis. And all we, although we say that the epidermis is in general not innervated, meaning there are no nerve fibers present, there are some sensory cells. But the nerve fiber to which they are connected that connects them to the brain, that nerve fiber is not located in the epidermis. And this is what allows us to say that it is not innervated. This orangey cell right here at the top of an epidermal ridge, this here is a tactile disc. This cell detects pressure. And in fact, this cell is placed in the stratum basally of the epidermis 
and it senses light touch. Whereas there are other pressure sensors deeper in the dermis that sense more forceful touch. This tactile disc, as you can see, it's connected to a nerve fiber that runs all the way to your brain. And this nerve fiber is also connected to another sensory cell, something over here that also detects vibrations. These cells here that are scattered throughout the keratinocytes in the stratum spinosum and stratum granulosum are called dendritic cells. The word dendritic means branching. And these cells have a branching type of appearance to them. These cells also do what is called pinocytosis, which as you may recall from chapter three is cell drinking. These dendritic cells, they roam your epidermis drinking the interstitial fluids. And if they encounter something that seems like an invader or a pathogen, something like bacteria, virus, allergen, fungus, these dendritic cells will run to a lymph node and tell your B cells, which are lymphocytes, that you're being attacked by whatever it is. Therefore, all of these cells are placed in the epidermis of the cutaneous membrane. And the functions of these cells, dendritic cells, is an immune function. This glob of brown cells down here at the bottom if you look very closely, there is a uh, star-shaped cell, and this glob down here is a melanocyte. Melanocytes are also cells contained in the stratum basally, and their purpose is to make melanin and to give that melanin to the keratinocytes surrounding them. As the stem cells in the stratum basally continue to do mitosis, they create one cell to replace themselves and then one cell to move through the epidermis and get sloughed off. I really hate that word slough. Ugh. By doing so, by sloughing off, the epidermis becomes a conveyor belt of sorts and the keratinocytes move from deep to superficial, rising through the strata spinosum, granulosum, lucidum, if present in thick skin, and corneum. As it says here, keratinocytes rise through the strata quite quickly in about seven days, but it then takes the cells one to two weeks to completely shed off or slough off. This is why wounds can take two weeks to fully heal as the damaged cells are sloughed off and replaced.